Motors. This is Paulie from All Docked Up. Doing our podcast Thursday night. And next to me, to my left, never do a podcast without Captain Buzz. Hey, Captain Buzz here. How's everybody doing out there? Buzzword, how you doing? You know, I'm doing all right. Because we have another special guest this evening. So you're all hype. Uh, absolutely. You're all pumped. His name is Andreas. Mr. Andreas is going to introduce himself. And uh, he is a you know, sailboat racer, avid sailboater. And we're power boaters, so we're going to learn some stuff tonight. Yes, we are. Andreas, how are you this evening? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, guys. Cool. Cool. All right. Let's let's get, let's into, get into boaters' bites. Let's, let's get talk into food. Boaters' bites. Because so. you know, Paulie's fat, and I like to eat. Paulie made a nice dinner tonight. Damn, it was good. Yeah, you like the chicken parmigiana, don't you? Yeah, and the Caesar salad. Oh, it's delicious. Well, I had a love affair with chicken parm for a long time. <laughs> 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 That's the reason why I got a gut. I uh, ate a very good, a uh, nice, solid, solid meal. Very, very good. All right, now we're going to move right into my captain's briefing. And so this is something, this is more nitpicky, but then it gets into, you know, you shouldn't do this. And it's, and I like to call it running with your laundry out. AB boys coming out. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? I mean, I see boats running down the, the canal in the bay with their fenders tied out. And they're running on plane. And the things flapping are... Flapping in the wind, flapping baby. Flapping around. The, You're running a powerboat and she's got wings. The, the cord is, you know, chafing the uh, chafing the uh, gel coat. Which and, is always fun for the detailer to get out, mind you. But, well, see, there, the detailer, right? He's got to put his two cents in and it makes sense. But you don't want to lose one of these things. They're not cheap, right? They're expensive. Do a decent tailor-made fender. 70 bucks, 80 bucks. Damn. Depending on the size, I, I've seen them go up to two, three, four hundred bucks, depending on the size vessel you have. You know, if you're going from one slip to another, or you're going around the corner, that's one thing. But getting up on plane and leaving your laundry out, or what we call uh, leaving your laundry out, or leaving your fenders out, uh, it's just something you, you you shouldn't do. And it and it's um, you know, you're not buttoned up, right? You want to be buttoned up when you're boating. Everything. Just to remind everybody, Buzz is the most anal retentive <laughs> son of a bitch out there. Now, wait a second. Okay. Everything's got to be perfect. And because he's so OCD, it's, listen, I applaud you. And you keep me on my toes. Like, he'll come on board. I'm like, yo, Paulie, you know, not for nothing. <laughs> what can I do, Buzz? What, what mistake do you say? And he'll tidy up the boat. And, and um, you know, I'm, well, a, I'm a very tidy individual. Don't get me wrong. But there are, you know, 18-hour days where I just don't care. And Buzzy shows up. <laughs> I, I've got, I've, Andreas, sailboater's got to be buttoned up. you got things going on. It's a busy busy atmosphere. Yeah, it's part of the checklist. Like, I think aviation, you have it. I guess I'm assuming in power boats, you have it. But we it's, do, you know, absolutely. It's the things you check over, and then once the sails go up, they're coming down. I bring them up, put them on deck, or I'm putting them inside the boat. We do have a checklist. Yeah. yeah. Every time that my boat, Buzz's, Captain Buzz's boat leave, we go through a checklist. Oh, and I leave for the weekend, and you see what, all the canvas and all the covers and everything goes up. Your boat is... Perfect. Thank You're us. a 10 out of 10. I'm a 9.25. Yeah, all right. We'll you know, that. I'll give you that. <laughs> all right. What's our what's our detailer's briefing? Detailer's briefing. So uh, I was working on Miss Bonnie's boat today, one of our uh, sales rep mm. uh, for the Chesapeake Bay for All Docked Up. And uh, I was just doing a final detail on her bil- uh, big Silverton motor yacht and her 50 amp power cord was foul. So I'll tell you what, I oh. used a product called Mold Away. Mold Away. Mold Away is an excellent product that really knocks it out of the park. Very easy. Uh, spray it on, wait a couple of minutes, go ahead and rinse it off and reapply if need be. Do you think it would help my cords? They're pretty nasty. I'll make your cords look brand new. The fact that you have an ass yet has been driving me bananas. <laughs> okay, you know, I see these dirty cords and I didn't want to break your stones too bad. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's making me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I gotcha. <laughs> Meatball. You do that to me all the time. So magic erasers and a little bit of mold away. I, I laid out the 50 amp cord all the way solid across the blacktop uh, parking lot, sprayed it down, flipped it over, sprayed it down. And I took magic erasers, cupped them in my hands and ran that 50 uh, or wow. ran the magic eraser right across the 50 amp cord. They look brand spanking new. Now, would that work on that? So my fenders sometimes get dirty and moldy. It probably look like black, like a, a cord that's all. Would that I'll work make your, on there? Absolutely. I'll make okay. your fenders look brand spanking new. I, I clean my fenders with a, with a uh, magic racer. Now, I don't have this mold away product. Mold away product is something that I, I use on extreme cases. And I mean, going back to compartments that are somewhere, you know, sometimes sitting out in your cockpit, rainwater gets in there, whatever the case may be, leaky canvas. And I use it on my all my compartments on board. The boat stays nice and fresh. 
Everything's nice and clean, but it knocks it out of the park. I mean, you can literally have a moldy compartment, spray mold away, and it's gone. Nice. Give it a fresh rinse, wipe it down, you're good to go. Is it a product that prevents it from coming back right away? Probably not forever, but it but Not it forever, but it does prevent it from coming, okay. coming back. Uh, you know, strips everything off, all the bacteria is gone, mold is gone, and it works really well because... I see a lot of the times going up and down the docks when I'm doing a service job on a customer's boat, you can see the marks from all the power cords all mm -hmm. over their swim platforms. There's scuffs everywhere. And it drives me insane because yeah. I got to buff them out, you know, <laughs> and, and then I start cursing them off. But what are you going to do? All right. Well, then let's let's now move into um, the story of Andreas and his sailing career. So, yeah. uh, Andreas, how long have you been sailing? Uh, I guess since 2015, so it's about six years now. Okay. And uh, so how did you get started in, in sailing? Right, and we, we're, we're interested because we're Yeah, because we're two power boats. Yeah, we, we want to hear. You know, we're two meatballs. We're going to learn a little <laughs> bit about sailboats tonight. Yeah, so I had uh, I grown up on power boats, which we can talk about too. Where are you from? So I'm from Pennsylvania, but my family's from Norway. Love it. Yeah, okay. So my dad, uh, we had a summer house in like southern Norway on the fjords. Go there for like two weeks to a month every summer. Nice. And it's on an island, so you need a boat to get to where you're going. So we had a couple power boats, row boats, kayaks. So I've been around that. Um, but my dad grew up sailing. I had never done it before. And one day he took me to the local lake when I was like, I guess, 21, 22. Okay. Uh, we went out for the first time. And I'm like, how come I had not experienced this before? Like, just... You pull a rope and all of a sudden you're going fast or slower. Like it's a weird experience. He I pulls a rope and we pull and we push we levers. Push drive, right? <laughs> I already did the first faux pas because it's a line, it's not a rope. Right? Uh -huh, so, that's know, right. That's exactly you know, here right. Here we go. But um, <laughs> so I did that. And then at the same time, my college roommate uh, had just bought a sunfish and they live over at Summers Point. I know the sunfish. I had one as well. And, that's, uh, my, that's the limit of my sailing experience. <laughs> <laughs> I wash and wax them, but I've never I, I've never operated one. Okay. Yeah, I mean they're everywhere. It's a great starter boat. Oh um, yeah. It's so simple. But he just bought one on Craigslist. He wanted to try it out, and I went down there. I went out in the bay, like by myself, and it just kind of all clicked. And I'm like, oh my god, this is great. And so we were doing that. It's awesome. Like every summer weekend, and then I uh, moved into Phoenix, uh, Arizona, for work. And I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do? There's no water out here. Like this stinks. It's a thousand like, degrees outside. Yeah, it's August. But it's, it's like, a dry heat. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ungods. <laughs> so it's like it's you know 110 degrees. It's awful. Um, oh. So I went to San Diego to escape the heat. Oh, the Gasland District in San Diego. That's a beautiful. Oh, I've yeah, had some good fun like, great there. Great weather buddy. all the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's perfect. 70 degrees. It never rains. There's no humidity, yeah. and I've never experienced any bugs. Uh, breweries everywhere. It's the, it's the best. Cafes on every corner. Big yeah, it. I love it. And it's not too wacky California. You have the military there, too. So it's a good balance of wacky and rigid California. Okay. That's yeah. how I look. The United States you know? Navy occupies. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Know, that, you know, all the waterfront there, and it's spotless clean. Yeah. I remember that. It was perfect. Everything was beautifully nice. clean. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, we, I took out a Hobie Cat there, rented it from this rental place. And loved it. Had never been on a Hobie Cat before. Those are fun. I have experienced one of those, too. They're a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But it's a wet boat. And that day was kind of slow. So it wasn't like the full speed, full tilt Hobie experience that you kind of expect or think of. If you went on YouTube and looked it up, that's what you would find. Yeah. Um, the next day, I came back to rent another boat. All the Hobie Cats were gone. But they had this Capri 22, which is a keel boat. So I guess for people who probably don't know what a keel boat is. Instead of the sunfish, which the person who's on the boat is the ballast keeping the boat steady. Right, with their weight. There's actually yeah. weight in the keel of the boat. And okay. so that's what's going to keep it righted, or if it flips over, right the boat. Now, is that a retractable keel, or is that something that's stationary? This one's fixed. Okay, on so it's capris. fixed. Okay. Yeah, and Got I had it. never experienced that before. I remember going out and just feeling the boat set, and no matter where I stepped, like, it didn't really matter too much. It, just, it was unbelievable. That's neat. And Paulie so, needs one of them. We need to get a ride. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll take you guys out some. I'd oh, love. See that yeah, you better have a good windy day. You're gonna need a turbocharger okay. tomorrow. tomorrow. I think with my ass on board, you're gonna need a little backup. <laughs> tomorrow power. looks good. I think it's 15. So we'll be white caps. So we'll be a good time. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. But um, yeah, it, it, like after that, I was like, oh my god, I have to learn how to do this. Like I want to learn how to do it right. Okay. So I went back to Phoenix, and turns out there's like a 10,000 acre lake. 20 minutes away from where I'm living. Aha! Uh -huh. And it's deep, and they have sailboats. And not just, like, sunfish and stuff, like, 35-foot sailboats, if you want. All right. But they got a big sailing community. There's a captain there, and he does sailing lessons, ASA 101. So I signed up. ASA 101. Yeah, you, you lost me there. Yeah, so it's like, a, it's a boating certificate course for sailing. So it's Amer American Sailing Association 101. And they okay. Have, 
They have different courses, 103, you learn 114. something new every day. Oh, Captain Buzz has got to take that. Shocker. Oh, I got to get into that. Go, sorry, yeah, to yeah, go yeah, ahead. That, I, so, I got to get into that. Yeah, 101 is like the just the basics, learning a keel boat, being able to take out something probably up to like 28 feet by yourself. Okay. That's what it's training you for. A lot of it's safety focused, uh, but also how to operate everything. All the different lines, sure. What things names, do. what things call exactly. are called. Okay, exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, Learn a language. Yeah, Learn right. the verbiage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that was like that's a lot of the test is just the verbs. Like if you get the uh, if you know the names of the stuff, you're set. <laughs> um, but I did that, and then right away joined the sailing club there, and met this guy uh, Richard, and he had just bought a Catalina 22, okay. which is basically the same boat I had sailed in San Diego, and so I was like, hey, I've been on these boats before, like. I would love to come out and join you. I didn't know that he had never sailed before either. Mm. And so he tells me, hey, come out, uh, join me one weekend. We'll kind of just get into trouble and see what happens. And that turned into this friendship that we were sailing every single weekend. If we had a weekday and we could go out, we would. And uh, that's, yeah, that's how it began. That's, that's really awesome. How I, that's that how I caught the bug. Yeah. To get the bug. Well, we got the powerboat bug. We got the. That's how me and you time. met. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. You yeah. met me walking down the dock with a three-piece suit on, carrying two deep cycle batteries. I remember like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been boating together ever since. <laughs> You're stuck with me forever, pal. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I mean, yes, I'm. I'm uh, about that. <laughs> stuttering John over here. You're killing me. <laughs> So you, you got into racing some Hobie Cats, too, as well, didn't you, Andres? Yeah, I did. So uh, when I moved back from Phoenix, one of my neighbors had bought a Hobie Cat. And right. so we were sailing that at the local lake. And I met this guy there who also was sailing Hobie Cats. So you seem to just run into people who like the things that you like when you get into something like this. Uh, of course. The so law of yeah. attraction, baby. Yeah, well, that's fine. like walking down the dock. I mean, you know everybody's into boating, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so he had bought a boat up in Sandy Hook, uh, up by New York. Yeah. And the bay there, and there's a catamaran club, and they're racing. And so that's where I kind of got into it. Oh, by Sandy Hook? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So I've come around that a couple of times. Yeah. yeah, so we race out there. And I'd also done some racing in Phoenix on a keelboat. So that kind of okay. got me my introductory start to it. Um, but it was the Hobie cast that I was like, wow, this is fun racing. Because it's actually super fast and intense, and uh, every little thing that you do matters on that boat. There's some boats where, you know, the slightest adjustment's not going to change much, but the Hobie, you feel it. Everything. And there's also high risk. You can pitch pole them, flip them over, cap them. Wow. So, yeah, they're not weighted. It's just you. It's a, You're the weight. You're the yeah. counterbalance. Yeah. And wow. you're out on a wire. You trap these off. Um, oh, so no kidding. Yeah, it's a different experience. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Oof. Sounds like it's fun. Keeps you on your toes and you learn very quickly. <laughs> yeah, you're, wow. you're, you're trapezed off. You're, the boat's flying a hull, so you're probably five, six feet off the water, and then you're on the wire, too. So the it's, You know, I'm, I have, I'm having a deja wow. vu yeah. moment. Uh, what was that movie? Um, oh, uh, with Zach Efron when he was running, he was running a Hobie cat up north in New England. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, well, my God. I, I remember um, the Thomas Crown affair, and they're on that giant. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. They flip, and back. he goes <laughs> ahead and he flips that <laughs> yeah. thing over. But they're, they're on those planks, and they're way out there. Yeah, those are. I think those boats are kind of famous for this. Charlie area. These, Cloud. These long boats, the Chesapeake long boats. They like take these giant boards You're and right. stuff them in, and they that's have, they're, right. they're way over canvas. They have so much sail up, and that's how they keep them flat. With, yeah, with all the guys hanging out on wooden boards. You, you see pictures of those in the museums down where we've talked about. I, I, we got to set something up. I got. I got. I got to get involved in this. Like, <laughs> I want to. I want to give it a whirl instead of firing up two diesel engines hitting a throttle. I, I would love to go out. Oh yeah, we got We got I'd yeah, love to. Yeah, yeah. And I, from what I understand. Oh, well, it's it's got to be a little bit peaceful because you know you have two giant engines running all the time. I mean, that was the biggest shift for me is coming from these power boats, especially like two-stroke engines, because it was long ago. So it's like running a weed whacker off the back of your boat all the time. <laughs> right. And then I go smoke. I go pre-mix. From, yeah, <laughs> pre-mix, smoke everywhere. I mean, I love the set. Like, that, brings back, that brings back memories. If you weren't me. smoking, you weren't <laughs> boating, baby, right. with the old two-strokes. Right yeah. on. Like that's a nostalgic smell to me and it brings back memories. But yeah, I love the peacefulness of it, hearing the water against the hull, yeah. the wind, um, which I guess like power boating, usually it's the opposite, right? Like you don't want to win your day too much, right? Is that no, because, I mean, or? well, how about this? It all depends on what kind of vessel you're running, what kind of boat you have. You know what I mean? Um, no, I'll tell you what, I'm not a big fan of rough days. No, no. I don't think anyone is in a power boat um, because it's, it's you know, you're, you're making, it, you're making it. It's loud. It's it's, uh, it's you're, uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. You're yeah. bouncing around. But I love listening to Andreas. Just he gave it a shot. 
He knew absolutely nothing. Jumped right in. Jumped right in, and 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 now you're you're racing boats. You're you have a couple of sailboats that you own personally, and you just learned. You just dived right. You do. I'm sorry. You dove right into it, and you learned. You took the time, but you educated yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. See, and here's the thing. I love what he did. He took the time to educate himself. Well, absolutely. Truly. Oh yeah. Besides, you know what I mean. Learning rules of the road. Taking a certification to learn how to run a sailboat, Very he important. took the time to educate himself. Yep, that's what we're trying to do. And that's what we're trying to promote on All Docked Up all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Take the time to educate yourself. Any Momo can hop into a powerboat and turn the keys on and go. But the question is, do you truly know what to do when, A, an emergency, when an emergency happens? Are you navigating through the waterways properly? Mm-hmm. Are you following the rules of the road? Mm-hmm. Are you making sure that not only the crew on board is safe, but are you physically safe? And and I love the fact that he jumped right in and he and he took the time, Captain Buzz, to learn. So so where is your where, where has your friendship with this gentleman taken you? So uh, with Richard from uh, Arizona, that turned into him buying a 27 foot boat that had been damaged badly at the dock, and uh, fixing that up. So learning fiberglassing, doing. Blister repair. So he recruited you to help fix the boat. Yeah, yeah, he took it. Smart man hey, on hey, free labor. So you're Is that what you did with me, you son of a bitch? Well, I, I, That's what it was. Well, you taught me how to use the You buffer. just put the entire puzzle together. <laughs> you son of a bitch. We didn't have we had fun doing it though, right? Oh yeah, I we love buffing do. a blue hole on a 45 foot <laughs> sport cruiser. Let me tell you how much fun. It's a blast. Mm-hmm. Mm. You'll hear this a lot, me and him, back and forth, back hey. and forth, back and forth. I know, I love it. It's great to uh, It's a head or gut. <laughs> I, I say it to him all the time, head or gut. Which sometimes, one? sometimes I don't give him a choice. He gets both. What sometimes I get both. I mean, it doesn't make me a bad guy, but what are you going to do? Well, you got to punch back. He's talking about Zac Efron movies. You don't look like a Zac Efron fan. Give him My some crap, man! You know, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, that movie just stuck with me. I don't oh, know. Oh, that's funny. All right. So, anyway, your friend Rich, I know it's taken you places. What, mm-hmm. what, tell, us, tell us about that. Yeah, so besides fixing up that 27-foot boat, which was a great experience too, learning how to fiberglass, um, do your own repair. I think getting, comp- like with these boats, I don't, I'm young, I don't have a lot of money, so doing it yourself was the way that I was going to be able to do boating. Sure. That was it. And then like learning from everybody else there who had the experience so that I wouldn't make that mistake. And that was my plan to not cost myself too much <laughs> doing this. Because like you always hear, you know, it's like bust out another thousand or whatever the statement. Break yeah. out another thousand. Yeah. B-O-A-T. Exactly. Break out another thousand. Uh-huh. And if I cut that down to 500, fine. Like I'd rather be 500. Than <laughs> so he's because willing like, to spend a nickel. Yeah, you have we'll to. We'll give him a little I love on that. You can't, you, can't cut too, you can't cut too many corners, right? You have to do it right. You got to do the job right. You got to do the job time. right or it's not safe. Yeah, exactly. If you didn't have time to do it right the first time, when are you going to have the time to do it? So I, I don't get it. But it's, anyway. it's, it's a both. Break out another 500. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, guys, everybody listening, those are the corny jokes that you just love about Captain Buzz. They're so bad, but... (laughs) Sorry to interrupt. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, so besides doing that whole project, um, he ended up moving back to England where he was from. Oh, wow. Bought a boat in Spain. And so that turned into an opportunity to sail across the Mediterranean. So we went from uh, Valencia over to Ibiza, which was like, I had never done an overnight passage. Wow. That's like awesome. That. Across the Mediterranean. I'm, yeah. yeah. That's, I'm nice. jealous. Yeah. How long did that take it? So that's about 86 miles. Uh, and we did it overnight, which like, I would never. Sailing at night I in the Mediterranean. Was, yeah. I would never, in the Ooh. winter, like November, you know, like the out there was fine, but coming back, we got caught in bad weather. Like, I don't think I, you learn from the mistakes, right? I think that time I was in over my head a little bit. Uh, uh, but but I got a couple of stories yeah. to share with them. Buzz yeah. Yeah. Captain Buzz wanted to kill me a couple of times for the dumb <laughs> mistakes I've made, believe me. <laughs> but you all you knew since say, like, I thank you for the experience because like, I'll never forget that. Yeah. And like, that's with me learning the good and bad. Uh, but yeah, that was a great one. And also that's, he had boats up in Oregon too, because he would go up to Oregon in the summer wow. and get away from the Arizona heat. Okay. And so we'd sail the Columbia River up there, race up there. Wow. Yeah. So it was a really good time. And just, I think sailing in different waters, going from lakes to bays to the open ocean and really seeing, I think one, what sailing has to offer. Like there's something there for everybody. Sure. There's no question. You can just buy the sunfish and be at the local lake and <laughs> do it, you know, three times a summer. Uh-huh. You can join the Hobie Cat Club and go race up in Sandy Hook. You can go jet setting over across the Mediterranean to Ibiza. I mean, whatever you want to do, it's there uh, for people, which I think is great. You can get into boat building, building a project boat with like your kid. I mean, there's so many options. I'm assuming you have a lot of pictures from that trip. 
Yeah, tons. And do you have pictures from there and pictures from home in Norway? And Oregon. Mm-hmm. We got to get wow, those pictures yeah. and we got to post and we got to get them on the site. I think so. We got to get them on the alldockedup.com platform yeah. and, and show people what you've experienced. People would love to go on the platform and see the pictures from his hometown Absolutely. and where his family comes from yeah, and their journey. Cool. See if you can get us some pictures. I, I know the listeners would love to see them. Yeah, you should do that for all your listeners, actually. You should say, show us where your boat's at. I think that's yeah, not a well, bad idea. You know what? Know. When, that's it. Well, when they sign up for an account, they, they have the option of putting a, bo- a, a picture of their boat up on their profile. Yeah, so but you know what? Just, Let's go that much further. And I like the way you're thinking. They can send pictures in. And, and educate us where they've been. And that would be well, we awesome. Have like a bulletin board. We could have a big uh, bulletin board. I'm, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, great idea. We got to call... Yeah, we got to call engineering over here and say, guys, we're adding to it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All the pictures and everybody then can share their experiences and other boaters, uh, members of alldockedup.com can share. can share everything and they can learn and see beautiful places where they haven't been. And then they, you know, some of the members may go, well, I would like to go boating there. Oh, we just nailed something great. That's an awesome. I love it. Creating the community. Creating the community, expanding it out. I love it. How is that anchorage? How do I get there? You know, what do I have to watch out for? All that stuff is invaluable. I like it. I love it. I like it. I like that a lot. So before we got started, Andreas, you showed me a picture of what's called a nesting dinghy. you tell us about that? Yeah, that let's was, talk that about was, that because this that was, really that was cool. pretty cool. With a tarp That was like a Lego <laughs> of boats. I, I don't <laughs> that understand. Yeah, that started out as uh, me selling a boat and not having a boat. And so I was like, well, I want something to sell if I don't find something else to buy. Uh, and so I had seen Stitch and uh, Glue Boat Building, which built on all that fiberglass stuff that I learned in Arizona. Okay. Um, but you basically cut the individual panels out of the, the hole that you're going to make. And then you put the seams together. You drill holes on the other side. And then you take zip ties or wire, tie them together, and then make like an epoxy fillet, put that through, glue the seam, and then put tape <laughs> and put tape over it. So it's yeah, it's, it's wow. uh, a lot zip of zip ties, wire, and epoxy. Uh, love yeah, it. and then you grind out. You know, you take the wires out because now it's all fiberglass together. So sure. eventually, you've kind of assembled this boat. So it's really easy to do. There's free plans online. Like it's available, I think, to almost anybody. And you can also buy higher up plans. I think there's a company okay. down like Chesapeake. Lightcraft, I think it's called, further okay. down there. And they do all that stuff. They do kits and all that, too. Like, tons of information. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so it's a nesting thingy. So, you at the bulkheads, uh, I cut it in half. I put two bulkheads in there. <laughs> and the front half. of the boat fits in the back of the boat. And now I can just put it inside my car instead of needing a trailer. Wow. So, you just assemble it. You screw the bulkheads in when you're in the water. And it's set to go. And and it's got a mast and a tiller. We need pictures a, of this, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We okay. need pictures of this, too. Yeah. Because I, I know that the... Our listeners would definitely love to see that. Yeah, it's hard sale. It's all about like doing it cost effective. I think that boat cost me like 200 250 to make in my time, which I was telling but it's worth nothing my time. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't that, cut yourself short. Worry, Come but, on, uh, yeah, that's how it that's how it began. And that was the story of the dinghy. And I still have it. I use it regularly at the lake, uh, especially because I didn't have a trailer boat at the time. My other boat was down here on the Chesapeake. So okay. that was my like weekday after work, go out for a couple hours. I can my girlfriend can in the uh, kayak. I can tow her with it. It's pretty amazing how it can move two of us. Like, really? Yeah. I got to so. see this thing. Yeah, I want to see it now. I don't think it's Paulie approved though. Well, <laughs> that'd be like Tommy Boy in the sailboat. Yeah. On the lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quit playing with your dinghy. Boy. Need a little wind here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. You brought up Tommy Boy. I well, you know. That guy in a little coat. That's great. That's a class. Oh my god. Dude, Jeffrey right now is laughing, dying listening to this. <laughs> I guarantee it. All right. So Paulie and I are power boaters and mm-hmm. and we want to know, we'll just talk a little bit about the relationship with power boaters and sailboaters out on the water. Now We've talked about in previous podcasts who has the right of way, right? Obviously, a boat, a sailboat under sail, has the right of way to a power boat, uh, and then there's then there's two sailboats, right? And so, um, what, how, what, who has the right of way in a, in a, in a, in a, when they're both under sail? Yeah. So when you have two sailboats, uh, the acronym that I was told was POWs. So POWs have to give way. POWs. So, okay. Yeah. So the P means port tax. So if you're on opposing tax, which means the wind's coming over the port side of my boat. Okay. And then the other boat coming there, uh, the wind's coming over the starboard side of their boat. I have to give way. You have to give way. Yeah, the, port, the, the person on the port tack gives way. Got it. Now, if you're on the same tack, so the wind's both coming over the, let's say, starboard side of our boat, 
the person who's closest to the win is the, the person who has to throw. give way. Got it. Yep. Okay. And then uh, overtaking, like any it's, boating situation. And I was going to say stand overtaking. Stand on vessels. Exactly. Stand on vessels. Yep. Okay. And so, like, when you're out there just cruising, obviously, a lot of people just make the turn early, show their intent. But when you're racing, it's the opposite. People are taking those rules and trying to push them to the limits. To, to try to cut the wind off. Yeah, right. cut, give people bad air or get them on a bad tack, get them in a bad position. Uh -huh. um, so you're kind of fighting playing, for the win. You're playing yeah. chicken a little bit too, right? Because you know that like this person at some point is going to have to either change their tack or they're going to commit a foul and then either be disqualified or lose time or whatever it uh -huh. is. So that's kind of part of the strategy too is pushing yeah. that limit, playing yeah. chicken. I like that. No, yeah. so like, that you know, you don't no be, neither have I. You don't want to be the guy on the port tack if everybody else is on the starboard tack coming through, right? Like that's... Okay. That would be an example of, you know, a risk that you might take in strategy to try to, to get ahead and then you're pushing it because either you're going to have to now, let's say there's a group of boats further up than you are, you're on the port tack, and then you tack over to get on the starboard tack too. Now you're not the windward boat anymore, right? You sure. Yeah. And so now they have to give all the way to you. So like you can see how you can push uh -huh, these rules uh -huh. to your okay, advantage okay. in racing, but when you're out there just cruising, it's a different story and it's really about safety. Being, yeah, being, being, exactly. yeah, being considered and, and following the rules. I love it, and and so this boat throws a pretty good wake, and so shocker. <laughs> but and when I'm running on plane, um, you, you know, when I'm out out there, um, you know, I see I see sailboats, and it, nobody seems to be upset. But I think you, you mentioned something about like the wake when it hits a sailboat, mm -hmm. and what what is it? What you called it something? Yeah, it's like it's like speed bumps, like when you're driving is the best way I can describe it. So when like you're taking them on the bow, okay. and you're going into them, it slows you down. Even if you try to take them on the right position in the bow, oh, it's going to slow you down. It takes your momentum away. You yeah. lose your momentum. And I never instantly. thought of it that way. I'm thinking, well, no. I, I think they want to take it on their bow because they're going to cut through it. But but sailboat Jeff next door always talked about, you know, you know, catching a wake on a stern. Yeah, he, didn't, he, he, did he did not like, like it at all. He, 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 I mean, he's mentioned it numerous times. Yeah, and that, I think that depends on, like, boat design. Okay. So I know that, uh, like, a, a full keel boat, might wallow a little bit because of how it's like a wine glass. He's got a full keel yeah. boat. He's got an island packet. Exactly. So he's definitely probably wallowing. Yeah. In the water. So he might, with a stern weight. With a stern, yeah. with a stern weight. He might versus other boats might surf that. No problem. And huh. it's fun. So uh -huh. it's just, okay. it just, de it depends on the boat. And like some boats can take them on the beam and it doesn't seem to matter. Other boats can. So I think you just, it's knowing your boat and knowing, you know, what, what it can handle and uh, what's comfortable. Okay. You see it. All right. That's fair. Here. I think it's just just I was just this this past week and I was on the Chester River and uh, making a maneuver and it was like a 90 degree turn around a buoy and the channel's kind of small there's not a lot of water when you're out of the channel and there's a sailboat coming at me and and uh and I had I came down off plane completely he was under sail he threw him some love to, I did throw him you threw him a little love well because it wouldn't have I, I would have swamped him because I had to stay relatively close to his position i said i said i'm coming all the way down i mean all the way down for him and he gave me a he gave me a thumbs up and he appreciated that because i i have a feeling that you know there there's some power boaters not might not be as considerate uh when they're in that type of situation so so folks if you if you are if you're erring on the side of caution that's probably the best way to go just come down that's all and give the give them a give them a break particularly in in close quarters i think when you're out there running i think whether it's a rule or it's not, it's common courtesy yeah. to throw another fellow sailboater or a, or a yeah, towboat captain that's got a boat under tow. tow. Yeah. Whatever the case may be, yeah. pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah. Don't blind sign. Don't, you know, don't pay attention. Don't do something stupid where your actions and you're completely unaware of it causes somebody else problems. Agreed. It only Agreed. takes a couple of seconds to bring her down off a plane. You hit the throttles, you're back up on plane, drop your trim tabs, whatever the case may be. Pay attention and throw some courtesy, throw some love to another fellow better. It goes a long way. It goes a very long way. And it's the safe thing to do. And it's the safe thing to do. So, Andreas, are you thinking about ever getting back into power boating? Yeah, I'm actually, so I've been talking oh, about Oh, he's, oh, see? so it's funny. Uh -huh. It's funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Andreas calls me, says, Paul, you know, the housing market is crazy. You know, him and his girlfriend are looking to buy a house. Okay. And I'm looking to buy a liveaboard. And I'm like, now you're talking my language. Mm -hmm. So I have, I schooled him on every cost 
And I think I blew you out of the water a little bit because I'm like right down to the numbers. Summer storage, winter storage, winterization, yeah, shrink yeah, wrapping, yeah. whatever the case may be. All that. And and I gave him the list all the way down, what it would cost. But I also lived aboard for a year. Yeah. So I know how to heat a boat, what to do, what not to do, the, you know, all different types. So I've been schooling him on this. Awesome. And it's, oh, I've been connecting him with surveyors to look at. You're looking at a 1979 an Alban, yeah. So and it's, a, it's a trawler. It's an um, Alban trawler. Nice. Yeah, which I hear like that's what a lot of sailboaters go to when they first get into motor power boats if they go back to them. Or Twin start, diesels, or nine and a half knots. Well, I don't think so. Well, wow. You got to realize so you know, <laughs> in a max of like five knots, 10 knots is double the speed you're used to. Oh, you're going to have so, the wind in your hair. Yeah, exactly. Well, what, yeah. what hair, I do what have, hair you know? got. Exactly. I'll be drying out my eyes, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's. <laughs> I, I'm excited for it. Uh, I think it's it's the right type of boat for me. Sure. To. You know, I think I could have fun. I've done the power boats with the little outboard on them, zipped around in Norway and stuff like that. But I think if I'm going to be comfortable and Paul has been a great advisor on all that stuff, that's the right way to go. Oh, I love Very doing cool. this. I love, I love advising him what to do, how to heat it, what he's going to need to do. Everything under the sun, wow. and he's looking at a nice piece 42 foot, 43. 43, yeah. Yes. So, this is going to be like learning how to. I'm gonna to have to rely on you guys learning how to drive. I was gonna say, dude, we will, we we're, all, we're, all, we're in, we're, we're all 100% in. in. There we're is nothing in. that Captain Buzz and we're myself take pleasure in is teaching somebody a how to run a boat successfully, safely. But these long trips, I have customers call me, Polly. Um, it's oh. the middle of COVID. Can, remember when Gary called us and he's like, I just bought a 42 foot to fever. It's in Portland, Maine. Yeah. We're in Chesapeake City, Maryland. And he's like, you mind like, you know, assisting me to get this thing back home? And I'm like, yeah, how's your wallet doing right now, buddy? I'm like, you're killing me, Smalls. The middle of COVID. So the, the trip didn't bother me at all. Captain Buzz was going to be on board. We're both extremely skilled and we love boating together. Um, but I said, Gary, it's the middle of COVID. Nothing's open. You know, we break down. This is on us to fix the problem. You sh- we loaded that boat I'll like pet boys. It, it was comical. Well, because we can do food. It was loaded with 10 days of food. Too. Yeah, then I had to feed and cook three squares a day for you meatballs yeah, well, for the course of the entire trip. And your meatballs were good for these meatballs. And damn right they were good because <laughs> I'm awesome. I know that. And modest, too. Oh, I'm completely modest. <laughs> I'll get out of here. But we love... And he's yeah, like, we're all in. We'll help the boat out. is Absolutely. in Gloucester, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, it's in Gloucester. So, so we oh, might have yeah. to take a little trip and yeah, bring him back. It's like two hundred miles, I think. I was looking up. So I'm you in. Know, it's, I it's, will give you my list of demands, and it's you know, is it the uh, Gloucester Yacht Haven? Do you know where which, which marina? It's I think it's at a private. Uh, private. Oh, a private yeah, it's at a private. Okay. Thing. All right. Um, yeah, I'm interested in it, and like actually going back to like overlap between sailboats and power boats. Yeah. So I'm looking up like how to drive twin. Like, what do you guys? Twin, twin screws. screws. Is that what? Yes, yeah. yeah, so that's what. Uh, but then I realized, like, uh, in these sailing courses, I was caught out to drive a single one. And the prop walk and wash and all that, it's the yes. same thing. It's it, the it, same it, dynamics. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yes. It's a fixed prop, and then the rudder moves. And, like, it, it is. It, so it makes sense to me. Yeah. Put, when, you're, when you're on the on the, on the, yeah, uh, shopping, transfer, the put shopping put your, cart, right? Put your thumbs out. Put your out. thumbs out. Right. And Use then both of your thumbs. Pull it back. It goes this way. Right. Well, you put your thumbs out, just to give you a visual. Mm. Uh, that's good. Yeah, it's yeah. actually good advice. Right? It's great. I'm telling you, it works every time. There you go. Put yeah. your thumbs out. Grab both of your shifters. Which way is your thumb pointing? That's where you know where the, where you're going. Back of the boat is going on the, in the bow. Mm. But I believe yours said that it does a top speed of 13. Yeah, Whoa. so we'll be racing out there. You know? We're going to be going like a bat out of Haiti there, buddy. Whole, yeah. I'm not going to know what to do with myself. Oh, I love it. Uh, it's a couple of days. We're it's, it, it really is. It's 268 yeah. nautical miles, you said? 200 miles. 200 miles. Yeah, so it's not... Oh, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, we did 624. Flies. We're in. We're in. Oh, well, that was brutal. As the crow flies, too, which I'm not used to. I'm used to tacking and... Like, oh, you know, right, yeah. Almost, you don't have to... You know, uh, doubling your distance if you're going into the wind or <laughs> sure. you know, having to think about where the wind's coming from. So this is going to be a, a completely different experience to just go where I want to go. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, we've been on some trips. That that Portland, Maine trip, I could, I could have killed the marina. I could have killed them. We had no heat. It, it, it was horrible. That entire shenanigans was incredible. On Good me. experience. It was a great experience. And and I'll tell you what, boaters, everybody who's listening, the mistakes that you make are what you learn from. Sure. Don't put yourself in a position where you're A, going to hurt yourself. But at the end of the day, don't, don't be afraid to learn. Things go wrong. And that's what makes you a better boater. 
That's what makes you a better skipper. That's where the experience comes from. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because if you're not failing, you're not learning. Well, and, and it's okay to step outside your comfort zone. Absolutely. Whether it's weather or a new port of call or a new boat or a new experience, just be prepared. That's all. And do some homework. Do some homework. Don't just, woohoo, I'm going to wing it. That doesn't work. I had a gentleman come down my dock last week, and he was overlooking at the 56 Carver. Mm. And I was sharing with him, you know, you looking to buy yourself a boat. And I completely schooled him on an hour. I'm like, what kind of boating do you want to do? Are you going to be a blue water? You want a blue water cruiser? You want a bay boat? Where do you go? How much time do you spend on board? By the time I was done with him, he's like, you have completely changed our mindset of what we need to buy. I'm like, okay, if you're going to upgrade, I think he had a Silverton, um, a Silverton uh, sedan bridge, okay. uh, the convertible, the Silverton yeah, convertible. The convertibles, yeah. And he had a 34. He was looking to do something nice along boat. the lines of 50, 55, 53, okay. somewhere around there. Yeah. I'm like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? You know, do you want diesels? Do you want get Like we went through the entire thing. And by the time he was done, he loved it. And by the way, uh, listeners, if you go to info at alldockedup.com, if you have questions that you have for us to answer, feel free to contact us. That's our job. Tell yeah. us what we can do to help you. Absolutely. And then w- when we go to the boat show in October, uh, you know, we'll be asking for folks what they want to hear about. Today. Right. We're going to be at the Annapolis Power Boat and Sailboat Show. That's exactly right. I love it. I can't wait to move to downtown Annapolis. I'm so excited. Oh, well, uh, we've uh, wasted another... Oh, We're at 36 more, minutes. Another more than half an hour. Andreas, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Great stories, great experience. Um, you know, we're all in. We want to learn about sailboating, uh, whatever we can help you with, with your powerboat. But uh, really great stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And I think Honestly. adding an extra mouth is what took this too long. So you guys need to <laughs> Yeah, know. but what are you going to do? It, it is what it is. You got to cut out the third guy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Buzzy, uh, Paulie, standing by on 6-8. Captain Buzz, standing by on 6-8. Everybody have a great night. Thank you for listening.